Video game controllers are as distinctive and unique as the time and console they were made for. Today, Game Ranks brings you 10 controller facts you probably didn't know. Number 10, the buttons on the Super Nintendo controller are a little bit more intricate than you probably thought. You see, in North America, the colors were different. Well, at least different than everywhere that isn't North America. The United States and Canada had lavender and purple buttons. Well, every other country in the world had red, yellow, green, and blue buttons. The controller's mold was the same and was used in every country, and inside there's actually a guide telling you which ones to use. On top of that, the buttons have keys, a little tab that prevents you from putting the wrong button in the wrong hole. They're designed with slightly different heights, with the intention of making them comfortable. And if you remember when the Super Nintendo came out, its controller had pretty much been unparalleled by any other prior to the Super Nintendo. Number 9, the original PlayStation controller was 10% larger in North America than it was in Japan. Sony made this decision based on the belief that people have slightly larger hands in the United States. This is just a bit more practical than saying, I don't know why, but these multicolored buttons just don't cut it for the North American market. Colors are too girly. If you remember at the time, they weren't targeting girls at all for video games. So instead of rainbow buttons, they did purple. But yeah, I totally get the PlayStation controller size difference. Number eight, the Nintendo 64 title GoldenEye 64 had a mode that you could use two controllers in order to sort of simulate a dual analog situation. Now on Nintendo 64, the controls utilized the C buttons, which were four directional buttons on the side of the controller that essentially did strafing and head movement. With this controller mode, that was replaced by the second controller with the two Z buttons handling shooting and aiming. However, you still had to reload and switch weapons with the A and B buttons. Although it was kind of confusing because I didn't immediately realize that that was what it was for. A lot of people who played on this mode thought it was some kind of weird two-player mode. Once I figured out that it wasn't and made my friend go home, it was pretty cool. And also a good reason why I enjoy dual analog sticks. Number seven, the buttons on the PlayStation controller aren't just you know, shapes. They didn't just go, yeah, replace the letters and numbers with shapes. That's all we need to do. No, they actually have meaning. For one, the triangle symbolizes perspective, which if you've ever seen representations for, always starts at a small point and moves out to a big point, and it kind of looks like a triangle. The square is meant to look like a piece of paper or a menu and was intended to, you know, open up menus. The circle was intended to mean yes, and the X was intended to mean no. When you think about it, it's actually very intuitive, or would be if people didn't use the X button as confirm all the time and the circle button as cancel, but they do. Number six, the US military actually uses an Xbox 360 controller for EOD robots, which are essentially the robots that pick up bombs or deliver bombs. It's really funny to see because there's all these dudes with guns and then a dude with an Xbox controller. <laughs> Although I can see why you would use that, it's like a very familiar device to nearly everybody on the planet. Why not? Number five, in the 1980s, Nintendo made a controller for disabled people that was extremely clever. First, instead of a D-pad, it had a long joystick that you can control with your tongue or your chin. And second, it had a little straw-type device that you either blew air through or sucked air out of. And that function as the A and B buttons. And while the device itself looked a little bit like maybe a dental apparatus of some sort, it did fulfill a very good purpose, which is giving quadriplegics a means to actually enjoy themselves with perhaps one of the best pastimes in the world, video games. Number four, you know that the US Army uses the controllers for the bomb robots? Well, guess what? They fly spy planes with them as well. It's almost like the US military knows that people playing military games with the Xbox 360 controller might be able to do a good job with an Xbox 360 controller in various military situations. Why can't we have more companies and things thinking like that? Hey, lots of people know how to do things with this. Why not adapt our product to work like that? It seems like our lives as people could be made way easier. And it's not like I'm super pro-war or anything, but hey, good on you, military. You're at least thinking. Number three, Sony's DualShock controller was given an Emmy Award. 
an Emmy Award. It was awarded Best Effects, and no, it wasn't. It was awarded Best TV Show. No, it was not. It was awarded for Peripheral Development and Technological Impact of Video Game Controllers, which I think was probably a, a category they made up specifically to give an award to that controller, because I don't think that there has been or was one of those before or after. But hey, that's a pretty cool thing. An Emmy Award. The PlayStation controller's parents were probably very proud. Number two, Nintendo's WaveBird controller, a wireless GameCube controller, was actually banned from being sold in the United States from 2008 to 2010 because a Texas-based company called Anescape Limited sued and actually won for patent infringements that Nintendo supposedly was engaging in. In 2010, though, Nintendo appealed it to the U.S. Court of Appeals, and Nintendo won. So they were allowed to start selling the controller, which is cool because it's a great wireless controller. It uses radio frequencies instead of infrared, which a lot of controllers had used for quite a while, and it works a lot better. Is it Bluetooth? No. Bluetooth is definitely the way to go for controllers. But at the time, pretty sweet. And finally, number one, the PlayStation had a power glove too. If you remember, the NES had a power glove and it was kind of an absurd controller. A lot of people thought, it's cool, it looks cool. I don't know if it's really that useful though. So obviously Sony said, we're gonna make one too. And when the PlayStation came out, so did the video game control glove. Now the video game control glove did look pretty cool, but it was also as absurd as the Nintendo one. <laughs> There's really no reason to use a power glove. It's not virtual reality, it's just a game. It's just a regular game that is much easier to control with a controller. So what's your favorite controller? Out of all the many, many years, which one's the best? Let's talk about that in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. The best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.